I don't like turbulence. You can feel the flame wiggling about. It's quite big. Oh, so oh, bad turbulence. It's not good. <laughs> oh, hold on tight. <laughs> you, you can oh. even see the wing. You can see the wing chicken. Oh my god. Oh, I think I need a gin and tonic after that. I don't know how long it takes most people to become old hands at flying, but it happened for me between the time I unfastened my safety belt and the arrival of that first drink. What is it about drinking and air travel that goes so well together? It's the start of a holiday and it's the start of your break, it's the start of your time away. So historically and very much the current day, people view flying very much as an experience and an adventure. And you know, you're sitting in the tube with a bunch of strangers, helps take the edge off. Especially being British, you know, we like to have a drink on a plane. I just feel fabulous up in the air and you feel more fabulous with a few drinks. And I like to have a glass of champagne. Probably gin and tonic. The most popular drink is most definitely a gin and tonic. And it's just a very pure, svelte taste. I enjoy beer, but the choices are very limited on a plane. I think if somebody were to make the, like a perfect beer for flying, I think your kind of senses are a little bit muted, so something with a little bit more flavor. Like a brunch beer. It would have a little bit of zest in it. A little tiny bit of hoppiness. Quite flavorsome. Not too alcoholic. Tasty, fruity. That would be a perfect airline beer for me. <laughs> James Watt and Martin Dickey are uh, back. I can't. Build that. to collaborate with the best brewers in the world Whoa. and brew a beer in the dumbest way possible. Whoa. Basically, it's the same shit they've always done. It's not bad. This is the Brewdog Show. Making beer and aviation are two of the finest achievements in human history. We're going to meet with the team at British Airways and see how we can combine the two. Maybe they'll let us fly a plane. Not a chance. Maybe they'll let us make beer in a plane. Mm, I don't think they will. Maybe they'll let us have a beer on a plane. That's a possibility. I'd quite like that. I would like a beer. On August 25th, 1919, the Aircraft Transported Travel Company began the world's first scheduled international air service from London to Paris. Then, after a series of mergers, it became known as British Airways in 1974. Today, flying with the call sign Speedbird, British Airways serves more than 45 million passengers a year, many of whom are thirsty. To make the perfect beer to celebrate British Airways' centenary while also tasting great at altitude, James and Martin are meeting up with Hamish McVeigh to get this idea off the ground. How's it going? Good. Good to see you, Martin. How are you doing? Welcome to British Airways. Thank you. So this is the headquarters. This is, yeah, this is where it all happens. And you're coming up for 100 years old? Yep. Not you personally. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I've aged well. So no, yeah, so it's our centenary year. So it's a massive, massive moment for us. Well, why don't we take a walk down the street and I'll take you to the museum and start to look through that history of drinking on board. Having a nice drink and flying are so closely linked. They do go together, there's no doubt about it. I'm actually scared of flying, so I have a lot of drinks and then feel very comfortable flying. <laughs> that makes you relax. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our Speedbird Centre. So this is where we have the history of VA right the way from first flight in 1919 right up to today. I like all the different outfits as well. Yeah, so these are the uniforms all the way through the years. The exits are down here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should go and meet Kelly and start talking to her about how we can make a really great beer for on board. Sounds good. OK, let's go. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I, I forgot I got the seatbelt on. safety tip. Kelly Stevenson is the wine and beverage manager at British Airways, making her a leading expert on drinking in the air. Would you guys like a drink? Hell yeah. Yes. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Champagne. The service is incredible. Yeah. Cheers. 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 How is it? A lot of seconds. Do you have any more? It's a long flight. Of course we've got more. Thank you. How much bottles of champagne does BA use each year? In our business class cabin, we use about a million of these bottles every year. A million a year? And then we've also got different champagnes going through our lounges and in first class. So we get through close to about two million when you count everything in. It's a lot of champagne. And is champagne the most popular drink on board? One of the most popular. Gin and tonic is, is really popular, but then we are seeing more beer drinkers come through. And I think when we're choosing what we list on board, we've got to be really selective because there's not much room on an aeroplane. So we always taste before we select any listing because we know what works in the air. Oh, so it tastes different in the it air? It does taste different because your taste buds are, are slightly dumbed down and you don't get as much from the food and drink. So if we're going to make a beer to be enjoyed at altitude, we just need to go all out in flavour? Yeah, that's what we look for. All out flavour and flavours that are expressive of themselves. So if you've got citrus, those sharp flavours that work really well. Fruit generally, if fruit is in a drink, it's going to be a success in that environment as we, as we need it to. Some champagne, sir. 
So if we're going to make a beer that's perfect for altitude, I think a lot of hops and maybe some citrus peel in there. Absolutely, knowing what we know happens at altitude and knowing what you know about beer is going to make that perfectly harmonised product. So the idea that we have that you're definitely going to shoot down, but let's go with it for now, is we'd love to maybe find a way to make the first batch of this beer on an airplane whilst it's flying. Um, it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. I can guarantee to you no one has ever done this before. It would be a real first. I'll take that as a yes. It's a definite yes. Cheers. 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 In order to work out the logistics of brewing a beer on a commercial airline, the boys meet up with project manager David Tubb, who, like their usual engineer named David, Hold on, David. will probably say yes to everything, no matter how absurd the ideas may be. This might actually happen. What kind of plane is this? 787-9. I thought it was a dash eight, but yeah. <laughs> Come on, gentlemen, we're going to see what we can do on both of you. Have you ever seen a brew system on a plane before? <laughs> That's just insane. <laughs> The Boeing 787 Dreamliner is the pride of the British Airways fleet. It can fly at nearly Mach 1, is one of the quietest rides in the air, and has a high-tech air purification system that reduces jet lag. It's the perfect setting for a brew house in the sky. We might just have to take out some seats. And then we'll get an awesome setup with a view out the window. Seats, Genji, you can't take seats out. Okay, well, we've got this 10-gallon system. We can maybe put it in the aisle, and it's got like a propane gas burner as well. Is this a propane? Yeah. Guys, you can't smoke on board. You're not putting a propane system on board. We've got a five-gallon system that's half the size, so we can get five-gallon system in electric plates. I may have led you astray saying you could do this. So we can't have propane. We no can't problem. have electric burners. Nope. We can't take out seats. Nope. We can't even have our five-gallon system. Nope. Has anyone described you as fun before? <laughs> nope. You said you could but help I'm here us. To help. I am here to help. Just not like this. What about back in the galley? There's someone that might work. Oh God. Some snacks. David, what do you think? Hot liquor, mashed tun, kettle. Uh, that's genius. Thank you. <laughs> it's a lofty accolade. So this gives the whole meaning of microbrewery, huh? And look, get to a boil. Definitely at height you'll get uh, a boil. And it's three tanks, so this is similar to our system. So this one, get to be our hot liquor tank, heat up the water. This is going to be our mash tun, so I'll put the malt in here, combine it with the hot water. And then finally, we're going to have our kettle, so we're going to boil it in here for about 60 minutes and add the hops. Gentlemen, I think it's a brilliant idea. This is kind of going to be like when we made beer in our garage when we started, except our garage wasn't flying about hundreds of miles per hour. This little brew system idea is perfect. It doesn't hurt the aircraft, it's safe. We're good. Being a genius is exhausting. I'm going to be napping first class. Before his nap, Martin has a stroke of genius yet again. If he and James can fly the plane, they'll also be the first pilots to brew a beer in the air. So they head over to British Airways' state-of-the-art flight simulator to log an hour's worth of training before takeoff. Should be plenty. Martin, hit it. Here we go. Oh, this is crazy. Have you got any idea of what you're doing? I've never flown a plane before in my life. I think you need to put these on. Check, check. Oh, not those. Okay. Touching Don't touch those. <laughs> <laughs> Just touch this. <laughs> Damn, we're going fast. What are we to take off? Oh. Oh, too high. <laughs> oh, 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 no, no, no. What's that noise? Wind shear. Wind shear. Proving themselves a danger to the simulator and to the history of aviation in general, James and Martin decide it's best to leave the brew day flying in the capable hands of British Airways. Let's see if we can find where they keep the tiny bottles of whiskey. It's brew day, and James and Martin have arrived at Heathrow Airport. Like the Wright brothers, Chuck Yeager and Neil Armstrong before them, they're leaving terra firma to accomplish a great triumph of human history. <sighs> Just as soon as they get through security. Hello, we're going through security at Heathrow's Terminal 5. Oh. I'm still amazed we got this malt, hops, and yeast through security. And the flight's up on the board, so this thing is going to happen. I think this way, this way, this way. We're going the wrong way. This way. It's almost time. Let's get the tram. I'm going to enjoy this flight. So we're checked in, we're through security, we've got our malt and our hops, and we're making our way to the gate. We've just missed the train. Ah, oh, it's because I was doing that piece to camera. I told you, we should have just got on the train. We should have paid attention to the task in hand. We're going to miss our flight. Fingers crossed we can make this happen. Straight. 
think we're getting, my trousers are falling down. Hello, we made it. I'll help you. I'm the adult that has to accompany him. 1787 Dreamliner, an altitude of 40,000 feet, a top speed of 500 miles per hour. And a tiny bag of malt and hops. It all adds up to the first ever beer made in an airplane. Speedboard 100. Let's do this. Oh, that was money. Hello. Hey. Whoa. So we're getting need to be all over this as soon as this fasten seatbelt light goes off. We need to be good to go. What an incredible plane a Dreamliner is. Look at the size of the wing. It's huge. So much better than pretty much anything that's not in British Airways. F hate the You've b always said that. I would never fly with any other airline. Don't. Just walk. If you're not going to fly with British Airways, walk. Do you think that's enough to get the funding for the episode? Yeah. Without making it feel like an advert? It definitely wasn't obvious. No, we nailed that. I'm James, how's it going, Captain? James, welcome. Yeah. Hi, Martin. Nice, Hello, to Martin. nice to meet you. How long have you been flying for, Captain? Five years. Thirty-five with a company. Wow. Are you nervous, Jared? Right. I'm nervous. Get this clear so we can get the water back. So this is an actual 787 Dreamliner. So Almost ready for takeoff. We are going. We've just pushed off, like BA 100. Dreamliner, seatbelt on, let's brew the first ever beer on an aeroplane. After we're taking the seatbelts off. Oh yeah. Cabin crew, please doors towards transit and cross check. I think this is it. Captain. Head. See, that would have been perfect if we just go yeah. in. Let's try it again. Just in case it works. Captain. Head. Oh wow. Yes. James and Martin, and we're about to brew a beer. It does feel faster than usual, it's it's steeper than usual, and bouncier than usual. Without the added weight of a full flight of passengers and luggage, this bird is flying light, which makes it far more susceptible to being tossed about in turbulence. I don't like turbulence. You can feel the plane wiggling about. It's quite big. Oh, so oh, bad oh. turbulence. It's not good. <laughs> oh, hold on tight. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can even oh. see the wing. You can see the wing chicken. Oh my god. Oh, I think I need a gin and tonic after that. I think I need a few gin and tonics after that. Just steady my nerves. Oh, Let's do it. I've got to wait for the seatbelt sign. I've told you how many times. Come on, seatbelt talk. someone. Excuse me. And um, could you help us work this Whoops. system here? Oh, right. The bed makers, right. The bed makers. Or yes. today, the beer makers. The beer makers, absolutely. Yeah. Where are you putting the beer? Is it going to go in the pot? So this one is going to be our hot liquor tank. So that one, we just need hot water. Right. This one is going to be our mash tun. So in this one, we're going to mix the malt with the hot water. Yep. We're going to use this asparage and this final one is going to be a kettle so we're going to look to boil it in here. Okay, perfect. Press the T button and put the handle down, you'll press brew. That is a hot plate basically so it'll keep the liquid warm. Amazing. It's like it was designed to make beer. I know. It even says brew. Thank I'll you. Leave it to it. Thank Thanks, you. Susie. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen again, uh, Jerry Palmer with just a short message for you and a very good luck uh, with the beer. Uh, boys, please don't break anything. Uh, we look forward to seeing the result when we get on the break. That's the official seal of approval from the captain. Why did he ask us not to break in? Let's maybe see another episode of the show. Let's get the ingredients out. We have our malted barley, some beautiful American hops, and of course, the special ingredients. Citrus peel. Don't think we've ever made a beer with like ingredients in this small quantities before. No, we don't have much time, so let's get mashed in. 
So we've got our strike water, we've got our malt, we've got some marinus water, we've got some crystal, we've got some cardamom in there as well. Good, give us a nice full body, yet still quite pale base with a nice sweetness and a nice bit of backbone. The sweetness level is going to be a little bit dulled because of the altitude, so we need to keep the beer a little sweeter. And we were instantly seeing some of that colour, like a deep dark gold with some ruby hues in there. It's beautiful. So we've mashed in perfectly. Let's get that back in there, set it down. We need the mash rest to happen. And that's the thing with mashing in. I always get really hungry, so I might go and get a snack in first class. I'm not sure you can just wander up into first class. Far away from the danger and stupidity of making a beer in coffee pots while hurtling through the air, wine and beverage manager Kelly Stevenson has been enjoying the quiet and luxury of first class. So James and Martin decide to pay her a visit and compete to see who can offer a better drink pairing with her meal. I'll go for the steak Excellent and choice. the chicken satay, please. It's also a good choice. I'll take the steak. Oh, wow. Thank you very oh, much. Fancy. So Kelly, for this first pairing, we've got the fillet steak with the potatoes and winter greens and a peppercorn sauce. So I've paired that with a classic Bordeaux blend. This is a really good pairing, Martin, I'm impressed. The left bank style with the heavy cab, it's, it's really working well. And just so you can experience this pairing yourself, here comes the air to plane. That's usually how I feed them. <laughs> Straight such a good pairing, I would love to sit here and enjoy it, but I've got to go and put together a pairing of my own. See you in a minute, James. I wasn't even finished mine. Gone. What time does the in-flight entertainment kick in? It's on now if you want to watch it, if I'm boring you. <laughs> <laughs> wow! We've got some chicken satay and the beer is also very special. So this is our working prototype for the Speedbird 100. So oh my goodness! Oh, those flavours just jump out at you. They jump out of the glass as soon as you've taken in the spice. Look at that peanut, that bitterness that you're getting from that. But this works an absolute treat. It's pairing so well that I think I'd have to choose. Speedbird 100. I'm afraid I agree as well. Nailed it. Good choice. I'm disappointed you haven't let me taste it yet. Oh, yeah. Open up the hangar gates. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Okay, I'm going to get back to making this beer. Enjoy the flight. Will do. See you later, James. Oh, no, you're helping me. Come on. It was nice while it lasted. It was. Enjoy. See you later. Now that they know the beer promises to be a perfect pairing for British Airways' top flight menu, they better not mess it up. Let's see this mash. So I think we're good. I think it's time to see what the system can do and get the wort in the kettle. OK. OK, so let's start the runoff. It's a bit different than normal, because usually we'd have a false bottom on our mash tun and a little outlet to drain off the sweet wort. But we're going to have to do it slightly different here. OK. So we'll use this sock and we'll pour the mash in and then pull the grains out. It's actually quite hot in my hands. <laughs> Let's get all the malt in there. Yep. The smell coming off this is beautiful. Yeah. A nice caramelly, sweet toffee aroma. Perfect. So we need to pull this out and then what we can do, we can use the coffee making part and then sparge the hot water through it. This is making beer in its most basic form. This is DIY, this is bootleg, this is bootstrap. But at the same time, this is beer elevated. Literally. Quite 40,000 feet. Okay. My hands are quite hot. Yeah. Let's go here. Let's put the kettle down. Ah! We should have thought about some gloves, to be honest. I want to get this back in. Kettle is in. Kettle is locked. Warmers on. And this is usually what they use for making coffee. So where you would put the coffee beans, we are actually putting the malted barley. Just trying to get the last bit of sweetness, last bit of flavor, last bit of sugar out of these grains. With a cruising altitude of 31,000 feet, the boys are halfway through their circuitous journey to Cardiff, Wales, which gives them about 90 minutes to complete their brew. So now we've got the sparge port. We're going to put that on top of the original mash and get it done to boil. So this is when we don't want turbulence. We've got these open containers of scalding hot liquid and we're going hundreds of miles per hour. It smells great. I think Susie would like to taste the wort and see what we've used our bet maker for so far. I'll go see if we can find Susie, would you... Oh, they're drinking champagne through here. <laughs> we're in business it's class nice class. in business class. <laughs> Do you want me to just check it's OK? <laughs> How the other half live. Anyway, do you think you'd like to come and taste the wort that we've made so far? Oh, I'd love to. Great. James, it's rubbish through there. You won't like it. Okay, I'm, I'm not going through there. 
So what we have here is what we call wort. It's essentially a hot malt tea. So it's going to be quite sweet with some really nice malt flavors in there. Well, I'm going to smell it. I can't taste it at this point because I'm on duty. Well, you can't. Oh, okay. there's, there's no alcohol. It's completely non-alcoholic. No alcohol in here. No. Oh, perfect. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Oh, wow. That really is. It's like oval tea, but less milk. Yeah. So this is essentially how every beer begins. You just mix the malt with the hot water, and this is what you get. Amazing. And I think you're an instrumental part of brewing this first ever beer brewed in an aeroplane. Unbelievable. I feel so privileged. We've got to finish this beer. You can maybe go and make the people in business class jealous with your glass of wort. I certainly will. Thanks for your help. See you later. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That is the engine of a Dreamliner at 40,000 feet. So we're at the boil now, super, super hot. I'm going to be very careful and hopefully there's no turbulence. James, if you want to add the first hops. So we've got the same blend of hops all the way through. This is some of our favorite American hops. We've got Centennial, Amarillo, and Simcoe. And the aroma coming off of this already is amazing. Huge pine, huge citrus, a lot of orange. Perfect. Okay, okay let's get this back on so we don't lose the heat. Lock and load. With the hop addition complete and the guys soaring over their native Scotland, it's time to add the citrus peels to spike the taste on the world's first beer brewed on a plane. So this is such a key ingredient in this beer as well. With these, we're going to bang in loads of fruit flavors and they're going to be super, super amplified. And just off a tiny bit, just the intensity of that punchy citrus flavor is off the charts. And I think that's why gin and tonics are so popular at altitude, because they have all that fruit flavor in there, that little acidic bite. So adding these peels is really going to explode in people's mouths. By the way, if you're watching this, sitting in a British Airways flight, and you haven't yet asked one of your cabin crew for a lovely Speedbird 100, do that now. All you need to do is press a little button beside you and a wonderful British Airways assistant will come and give you a beer. It'll be the best decision you've made today, maybe the best decision of your life. Do it, you know you want to. Okay, that should be the boil finished. Done. Yeah. Adding the most aromatic ingredients at the end of the boil just to keep as much of that aroma as we can. The blood orange and grapefruit peel. You're just getting this explosion of flavors, just hitting your nostrils and it smells delicious. And that's the thing with citrus peel. All the real aromatics are in the peels, not in the fruit itself. So adding this is really just exploding out of the kettle. Oh, my ears keep popping. Are we going up or down? We might be starting to go down, so we need to get a move on. Yeah. Well, we need to cool this down. I think outside is like minus 60 degrees Celsius. So we can just open the window and put it outside. If you open that window, you'd be sucked straight out and then right through the turbine. Maybe let's just put it in the fridge. Yeah, we should. As their flying brew house begins its final descent into Cardiff, the wort cools in the fridge and is ready for transfer. How's the temperature? Perfect. Okay. And the best thing about this antique kettle is that it has some holes drilled so we can strain out all the peel and the hops. Perfect. So we're now transferring the first board ever brewed in an aeroplane. We are getting perilously close to making this thing happen. We've got to get it in here and we've got to pitch the yeast. So this is maybe the tiniest batch of beer we've ever made, yep. but also the most exciting in terms of how we made it, but also the most exciting in terms of what it stands for. Why have you got yeast in a little shampoo dropper? It's the only way I could get it through security. Perfect. Okay. Depending on your perspective, this is either one of the finest achievements in human history or a poorly conceived market and gimmick by two companies that should know better. Maybe it's somewhere between the two. Captain Jerry, you can now land this plane. You better make sure this is completely secured in. I managed to get one of the infant seat belts. Oh yeah, perfect. This is more precious than anything. Yeah, they're really tight. I still can't believe me let us do this. <laughs> like, we've done it, I still can't believe we got to do this. We've done our job perfectly. Now it's just down to Jerry to get us safely back onto the ground. Cabin crew, take your seats for landing. In the capable hands of Captain Jerry Palmer, the world's first ever beer brewed on a plane is cleared for landing. Oh, 
We've been six miles up in the air. We're now back on the surface of the air. With the first beer ever made in the skies, Speedbird 100. In today's troubled times, it's not often we can agree on something truly remarkable. BrewDog and British Airways have joined forces to set aside the differences between ground and sky, brewing a beer made at speed and altitude on an airplane. One of the greatest achievements in human history. I can't believe you didn't buy return tickets. I'm not going to fly again until I can drink Speedbird 100 on a flight. So we'll just walk? We'll just walk. With cell service restored, the boys phoned their recipe to the brewery in Scotland. It's a 50-hour walk from Cardiff to London, so the brewery had plenty of time to ready a batch of Speedbird 100 to share with their British Airways family back at the lounge in Heathrow. Hey, guys. We're super excited and honored to be part of this celebratory year for British Airways. We're super excited about a partnership to come up with a very special beer to celebrate the centenary. I love British Airways, I'm a huge customer, I'm a huge fan, so it was amazing to hook up with them in this project. So thanks so much for all the support and making this happen, BA. We wanted to not only make this beer super special, we wanted to brew it on an aeroplane. And no one's ever brewed a beer on an aeroplane before. <laughs> with good reason. We had massive ambitions about getting a really cool brew system on board, get the gas burners going, get a really big flame in there, get the boil. <laughs> None of that's possible. <laughs> so for this beer, we actually made it with the tea and coffee making facilities on board. So this is a beer specifically designed to be enjoyed at altitude. A punchy, bold explosion of flavors. So we're super excited for you guys to try it with us. So would you guys like to taste some beer? Yeah! So what you've got in your glass is Speedbird 100. This is the fastest that beer has ever been made. This is the highest that beer has ever been made. Also, you can enjoy flying with BA even more. Although we're actually wasting each other's time here tasting it at ground level, this beer is designed to be drank at over 30,000 feet. But here it goes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great, lovely flavors in there. I get a bit of honey on the nose as well. Such an easy drinking beer. What would you usually drink on an aeroplane? Gin and tonic. I would normally go for like maybe a wine and then as I would with the night out, the second I've had a glass of wine, Shots. I want a beer. What beer? Shots! <laughs> you don't think it was a night out? No, I don't drink alcohol. Not on the plane. Why not? Dehydrates you. But this so is a it. session beer, it's 95% water. Well, you say that. Either rum or wine, I guess, normally. So do you think you would change rum or wine for the Speedbird 100? Absolutely, absolutely. So if I was sitting next to you and we were getting on really well and I said, hey, let's have a beer, what would you say? I'll have it. Tell me next time you're flying what your seat number is and we can totally do that. 13th of June, Nairobi. And do you think after a Speedbird 100 you can maybe fly the plane? Well, I think I could, but I probably shouldn't. How many beers do you think we can have between London and Nairobi? A pint every 20 minutes. <laughs> every 20 minutes. So you've gone from not drinking alcohol at all. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> have you ever caught someone trying to get into the Mile High Club? Officially? <laughs> I think it certainly makes a difference to what they currently serve. So an improvement? I don't think there's any comparison with what they've got at the moment. I might have to smuggle some down off the flight. <laughs> oh, some illicit beer. Cheers. 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 So what you have in your glass is the first ever beer made on an aeroplane. And not only that, it's a beer to celebrate 100 years of British Airways. So if you think this is a fitting beer, on the count of three, stick your glass in the air and say cheers. If not, we'll see you in 100 years time and we'll try again. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Cheers! Thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for tasting this beer. And we'll see you back here in a century's time for Speedbird 200. <laughs> I heard something about a thing called the Mile High Club. What did you hear? Well, I thought because we're brewing beer at over a mile in altitude, that we could form that club and be members together. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. So it's like James and Martin joined the Mile High Club together. Yeah, let's definitely do that.